This is my 15 amp, 92 pound DeWalt wood planer. And today I'm gonna to review it for you. I'm gonna show you the good, and I'm gonna try very hard to find something bad. Spare blades, foldable wings, front and back, and a Torx wrench with magnets on the back side to grab the blades. This is it. These are all your accessories. You gotta love a simple tool. It even has onboard storage for all the accessories. You have a standard power switch, on, up, off. And it also has a loop in the back, so if you're in a school, you can lock it down. Like every tool I've reviewed so far, but never told you about, it has a reset button. I've never used it. The height knob on the side says, one revolution equals 1 16th of an inch. So, to raise it up, 1 16th of an inch, or to lower it down, 1 16th of an inch. A lot of what I do is just, finishing. I'll do that 1 16th of an inch because I'm not really worried about the final thickness like when I ran six dozen cedar pickets through this thing. All I really wanted to do was make them look better and take off the chatter. So 1 16th at a time, perfect. The exhaust port on the back of the machine is two and a half inches and four inches. Genius! This has a fan in it that will literally shoot wood across the room if you don't have this hooked up to an actual large capacity dust extractor. I could fill up a 55 gallon contractor bag in minutes if I'm really hitting this thing hard. Well thought out. It has a carriage stock at popular thicknesses. It moves smooth and easy, has nice detents and stops on its own. But more on this in a minute. It can vary the speed at which it feeds the wood. Slower for finishing, 179 cuts per inch. Faster for dimensioning, 96 cuts per inch. You're only supposed to shift this while the machine is on. If you use your included accessory, you can remove the access doors. This is a belt drive motor, and the carriage up and down is chain drive. Belt drive is good, because if you overload the tool, at least there's a failure point before the motor. At nearly 100 pounds, and kind of big and awkward to pick up, it has probably the best handles of any tool I own. There's no skeletonized plastic on the back of it. It's all solid and nice, and you can really get a positive grip on it. It's not cheap. There's a material removal gauge that moves, and you can set it down on the wood and see how much you're about to take out before you feed it. It also has a width gauge on it. So for a 13 inch board, the most you can take off in a single pass is 1 32nd. For a three inch board, you can take a full eighth, I don't think I've ever taken that much off at once. I feel like I get a better quality cut if I make a lot of passes and just take a little bit off at a time. The ruler on the side goes from zero all the way up to six inches. It takes a while to crank it all the way up. You can also loosen these two screws and calibrate this gauge. So how does the carriage stop work? This piece of scrap wood is three quarters of an inch thick, but let's pretend for a second that it's one inch thick. So what we would do is crank the carriage up to about an inch and three quarters and set our carriage stop to three quarters. So we would bring this down to its thickness of one inch so we could start planing it. And we would do cut after cut. Well, after a few passes, we run it down to almost three quarters of an inch. Before we get past three quarters of an inch, this stops and I can't go any further. And you can see by the thickness gauge, it really hasn't moved. The machine has stopped at three quarters of an inch. And now we have a three quarters of an inch board. So if we do a whole bunch of them at once and we're not really paying attention, this will save us from going past the thickness we want. Every access or inspection panel on this tool has a torque screw that uses the same included tool. So you can service the machine or inspect it to see if there's a problem without going to the truck. Why is it so hard for other companies to figure out? So these blades are supposed to be really easy to change. They're two-sided, so you just flip them over and you can use the same blades twice. So we don't need the included accessory blades yet because I have never changed the blades in this. This whole top is an access cover and you just need your included tool to take it off. There's four Torx screws. It says no step on the top, which is probably a good idea because this thing's expensive. It also says feed direction this way. And if you need that, I'm gonna say go get an adult. The screws are captive, so when you take this off, you don't lose them. Yes, I know I have skeletons on my gloves. I buy these because they're nice and sticky and they're cheap. And my four-year-old thinks I'm tougher than I really am, which is important. The inside cover has three wing nuts. They're not captive. I 
I shouldn't have to tell you this, but please wear gloves and be really careful because it's basically a giant razor blade on both sides. The cutter head has a release, which is this bracket on the side here. What you do is you push it down and it allows you to rotate the cutter head. They suggest a scrap piece of wood to do this. I couldn't agree more. You don't want to get your hand anywhere near this thing because it's sharp. There are three blades. So you're going to do all eight of these screws, take this bracket off, flip the blade around, make sure it's aligned, put all eight screws back in, and then rotate the cutter head two more times and keep doing it until all the blades have been flipped. A built-in small parts tray. Let me know in the comments if you own a tool with a built-in small parts tray for when you're working on the tool because the wall just won't give me anything to complain about. The magnet on the tool is strong enough to pick up the bracket. The bracket's heavy steel. It has a beveled edge and a flat edge. The beveled edge is the edge that goes with the knife edge. So we'll just set that down in the same orientation so we don't screw it up. And there's your blade. Basically a razor blade. We'll spin it around. It's got a couple oblong holes so you can align it. It needs to be in those holes to be aligned. We'll take our bracket, set our bracket back down, and we'll put our screws back in. And then looking around on the inside, the fan cage, it's got a squirrel style or like a automotive turbo impeller. You got a chain that goes all the way around. The chain drives these sprockets, which travel up these big threaded rods. It should also be noted, the dust extraction inside this thing was really well. I've never cleaned inside here and there's almost no sawdust in it. The cutter head cover, is designed like a vacuum cleaner. This fits in a little track right here. It fits in, you push it in, and then you just push it down. And then you put your wing nuts back in. Drop your cover back on. With its captive screws that I haven't lost. So who is this tool really for? And the simple answer is it's for professionals and it's for serious hobbyist woodworkers who need a good quality tool because they're gonna use it a lot. I am not a hobbyist woodworker. And for me, a tool like this that I know I'm gonna beat the snot out of, it's worth spending the extra money. I have it because tools I know I'm gonna be rough with and tools that need to still be precise after I've been beating them for years are worth the extra money to me. Post in the comment, what brand do you have and how much do you like it? because this is the only bench top planer I've ever owned. As a do-it-yourselfer, having a wood planer will elevate every project you do. Before this, drawer boxes would be three quarter inch stock. I built those for my mom's house. I did them because we were selling the house and they just had to get done. Drawer boxes should be half inch. When I built the staircase on the front of my house, a month after I built it, they had a bad cup to them and two of them were going in a different direction because there was some imperfections in the boards I didn't want to see. So I ended up flipping them over and not thinking about it. Taking them off and running them through this planer, if you go little by little, you can work the cup out of a big heavy board and now they're flat. And now they look great. And you don't feel a weird cup when you walk up the stairs. These are simple projects. They're not fine woodworking. They're not building furniture. But a tool like this really, really makes a difference. With essentially four different ways to adjust the height. A 15 amp motor that won't quit. And most of its weight on top of the wood. This has become one of the best tools I own. If you found this review useful and you'd like to see more tool review videos, do us both a favor and subscribe. At Popular... At, it has a carriage stop at popular, can I say the word thickness? Uh.